What are the companies that bribe? And is it good for society that they do so? What we found over the entire period was that the less efficient companies are the ones that bribe. On average, the benefit you get from paying a bribe is about $7 for every dollar of bribe you pay. But those benefits disappear the higher up the ladder you go. So if you bribe a head of state, for example, the benefits are pretty much close to zero. Now the, then the question becomes, okay, why not just pick a lower level guy to bribe? Why do you have to go to the head of state? Well, the lower level person also gives you a lower probability of winning the contract. But then the question becomes, why are you so obsessed with winning the contract? And what we find there is these guys are fixated on sales growth. So companies which are earning sales higher than normal are the ones that really choose to bribe. And I'm suspecting that the answer is driven by the fact that sales growth is all they're maximizing. They really don't care that much about maximizing shareholder value. The companies may get benefits. As I said, if you bribe a lower level official, you do get some benefits. But that's not necessarily good for society because from a society perspective, if a less efficient firm wins a contract, they're using more resources. They may be using substandard resources. Um, they may be using resources which could be better deployed elsewhere. So society would prefer a more efficient firm gets a contract, but if the less efficient firm gets a contract, that's definitely bad for society. Right, that's the overarching conclusion from 30 years. We look at actual contracts. So in other words, these are actual documented bribery cases where the firm uh, paid a bribe, got a specific contract, and we know the bribe amount and the contract case. Unfortunately, this is not true in most cases. So most previous studies have looked at surveys. So they survey companies and ask them, you know, typically, in your industry, how many firms actually bribed? Um, how many firms typically bribe to win a contract? None of these firms will ever say that they themselves bribed because nobody ever bribes, but they say that typically 60% of the firms in our industry bribe. Now, that's a major problem because nobody actually confesses themselves to bribing. Many of those are going to be a little biased, so you end up with numbers which are not quite reliable. In our cases, since they're actual documented bribery incident, we have other issues, but we don't have that self-bias, uh, reporting, uh, reporting bias issue. The three other types are firms, for example, which paid a bribe, but didn't get the contract. So they wouldn't show up in our data. But that's very rare. I mean, usually I would suspect you pay a bribe, you don't get the contract, you demand your bribe back, or you never pay a bribe again. Right? So the second possibility is you pay a bribe, uh, but the, uh, uh, you get caught, but the authorities plea bargain it down. So you basically say, okay, I won't pay a, bri I won't pay a fine for, getting, for paying a bribe, I'll pay a fine for fraudulent accounting. So it shows up in the newspapers as fraudulent accounting, not as paying a bribe, and we wouldn't capture that either. But most important, we don't capture the firms who actually pay a bribe, get the contract, but were never caught. So we do need to take that into account. And in fact, the way we do it is we look at exogenous cases. So in other words, it's not the firm that gets caught for paying a bribe, it's the firm that gets caught, there's the politician that gets caught for taking bribes, and then the, all the other firms who paid a bribe to him are the ones who actually um, got caught. So it's driven by the politician, not by the firm. Calling it the tip of an iceberg is probably a very good idea because honestly, as I said, we don't capture firms who pay bribes and don't get caught. We can, all we are doing is trying to get an estimate of the average benefits you would have got had you been convicted of bribery. And the problem is likely much larger. In our sample, for example, if you look at the size of the stock market, we would expect in the US, you have a significantly larger number of bribes than we actually find. We find a lot lower. That may be because in the US, anti-bribery laws have always been incredibly strong compared to the rest of the world. In Europe, for example, in many countries, it wasn't illegal to bribe a foreign politician. You'd put it down to the cost of doing business. In fact, you could even, in many cases, deduct it from your taxes. So in, in countries like that, you know, it's not necessarily a problem to bribe. It's become much more uh, prevalent across the world uh, that bribery is actually regarded as a criminal activity now. And I think that has a positive effect in terms of society going forward.